Assalamu uh, alaikum. Hello everyone. Uh, you are watching me, uh, Dr. Zahoor Islam on my YouTube channel. So, uh, some of my students, they have demanded that sir please uh, prepare a lecture on nanoparticle. So, on that behalf, so uh, I am going to uh, explain the background of the na nanoparticles. Okay, so let us take a start introduction to the uh, nanoparticles. So, first of all, uh, these are the object use you can see on my screen uh, nano drug delivery system. So, what is nano drug delivery systems? Uh, and then uh, we will uh, talk about the nanoparticles and the drug pigletic gel and polymer which is a profiles developing procedure for pig pigletic gels nanoparticles and then evaluation characteristics of the pigletic gel nanoparticle. So, uh, first of all what is nano drug delivery systems? Why I call magic bullet? So, the main goals and objective of nano drug delivery system is to provide a therapeutic amount of drug to the targeted area, target site of the body. So, I mean that uh, there are uh, different uh, drug delivery system. So, uh, one of the most uh, uh, prominent and uh, effective way to deliver a drug to the targeted area. So, that is nano drug delivery system. So, the main purpose and the main goals of nano drug delivery system is to provide the therapeutic amount of a drug to the targeted site of the body. While the second goal is uh, you must will have to maintain the desired therapeutic efficacy of the drug as well as to minimize the levels of the side effect. These are the three objectives. Whenever you are going to target some area with the help of you can say nano drug delivery system. So, all these three factors they will be under uh, concentration. One is the uh, provision of therapeutics uh, amount of drug to the targeted area and then uh, to maintain the desired therapeutic efficacy of the drug and after that to minimize the uh, levels of the side effect. Now, what are the carriers which are used for the nano drug delivery systems? So, as we know that carriers they are usually used for transportation and retain of the loaded drugs. So, first one is colloidal carriers. Uh, colloidal carriers there are two types one is uh, vesicular system the second one is cellular carriers. So, in vesicular systems uh, which include the liposomes technology, uh, pharmacosomes, verosomes and immunoliposomes, microparticulate systems and nanoparticles, microparticles, magnetic microspheres and the nanocapsules and paramolecular delivery system. While in cellular carriers the resealed erythrocytes, uh, serum albumin antibodies and platelet leukocytes it come under the category of cellular carriers. Uh, another one is supramolecular delivery system. So, in supramolecular delivery system uh, there is mycelies and reverse mycelies, mixed mycelies, polymeric mycelies, liquid crystals and lipoprotein. Uh, and polymer based system the uh, signal sensitive muco adhesive biodegradables and bioerodibles uh, as well as solute synthetic and polymeric carriers they are used. Macromolecular carrier you know these are proteins are glycoproteins which are also called new glycoproteins and artificial viral envelopes or glycosylated water soluble polymer that is called polyl lysines and MAPS immuno uh, fragments antibodies uh, enzyme complex and uh, bispecific uh, toxins amenotoxins and RCD4 toxin conjugates lecithin etc and polysaccharides. So, the it, it also come under the category of macromolecular carriers. Okay, come toward the um, uh, introductions about the nanotechnology. So, you know nanotechnology is a broad interdisciplinary area of research, development and industrial activity. Mm -hmm. 
nanoparticles uh, these are the in products or you can say nanoparticles can be defined as these are the submicrons particles and with the particle size is less than one micrometers colloidal system generally but not the necessary made of polymers and biodegradables are not Uh, nanoparticles are the end products of the wide variety of the physical, chemical and biological process, some of which are the novel and radically different, others of which are quite commonplace. So, this, this term is uh, somewhat general. So, since it does not take into the account morphology and structure organization of the systems. So, I means according to according to the process used for the preparation of nanoparticle, nanospheres or nano capsules they are obtained. So, how we can differentiate between the nano capsules and nanospheres? So, nano capsule these are the vesicular system and with the drug is confined to the cavities surrounded by a unique polymeric membrane. So, you can see here this is nano capsule and this and this and this nano capsule uh, you can see here the nano this is a vesicular system and you can see here the drug is incorporated or the drug is incorporated uh, inside the uh, cavity and core which is surrounded by the polymeric membranes while the uh, second one is a nanosphere so the nanosphere is a uh, metric system and with the uh, drug is dispersed throughout the particles. So, this is nanosphere you can uh, overview. This is the uh, polymeric metric and this polymeric metric uh, uh, the drug is uh, th uh, throughout dispersed. Uh, just like uh, you can say uh, this is a metric system and with the drug is dispersed uh, throughout the particles. So, there is uh, you can say huge difference in nanosphere and nano capsule. So, here the system is uh, uh, there is uh, you can see this is a metric system and which uh, this drug is uh, already dispersed throughout the particles. Our main goal is uh, how to control the particle size the uh, surface uh, properties and release of uh, pharmacology active ingredient in order to achieve the uh, site uh, specific action of the drug at the therapeutically optimum or optimal rate and dose regimes. Uh, difference between uh, liposomes and uh, nanoparticles. So, you know that liposome is actually at protecting the drug from the degradations while the nanoparticle it increase the stability of the drugs. The liposome it is less targeting than the site of the action while the nanoparticle they are more targeting to the site of action. The liposome technology with the help of liposome we can reduce the toxicity and side effect and nanoparticles so we can increase the encapsulation efficacy. In case of liposomes, there is low encapsulation efficacy, while in nanoparticle it minimizes the leakage of water loss. So, in liposome technology, the rapid leakage of water soluble drugs in the presence of blood components and poor storage stability, while the nanoparticle it minimizes the leakage of water and the soluble drug in the presence of the blood components. So, that was a minor. Uh, uh, difference between liposome technology and nanoparticle. So, um, as I am going to uh, proceed this lecture, but uh, I am uh, very thankful uh, to my honorable teacher who is uh, my supervisor, my mentor, uh, Dr. Shahzeb Hanso, who is currently working as assistant professor at University of Malacca. He is the only person who give me a proper guidelines and he motivate me. Uh, toward uh, nanotechnology, uh, how how we can design different type of studies. So, um, this is just uh, all due to his hard work, uh, 
uh, and dedication. So he compelled me to uh, do some work uh, on this area. Okay, viewers, uh, now come toward the merits, advantages of what are the advantages of nanoparticle. So, uh, you know that uh, particle size play very important roles in drug delivery system. So, particle size and the surface characteristics of the nanoparticles can be uh, easily manipulated to achieve the both phase to an active drug targeting after parental administration. So, the control and sustained release of the drug during the transportations and at the site of uh, localizations. So, particle size play a very key role as well as the uh, surface characteristics of the nanoparticles. So, it can be easily uh, manipulated in order to achieve or objective for both patient and active targetings after parental administration. Uh, this is clearly very easy to understand that subsequent clearance of drug so as to achieve to increase uh, in drug therapeutic efficacy and <coughs> reduction in side effects. <coughs> drug loading is relatively high and the drugs can be incorporated in the system without the chemical reaction. There is no need of chemical reaction, but the drug is loading uh, with a, in a uh, relatively in a high capacity and this drug can be incorporated there without any chemical reaction. The site specific targeting can be achieved by attaching the targeting ligands drug to the surface of the particles. The system can be used uh, for the various routes of administration including the oral, nasal, parental and intra aqueducts. <coughs> now question is that uh, how the nanoparticles they are prepared. So, there are different methods of preparations, uh, nanoparticle can be prepared from the variety of material. So, we can prepare the nanoparticles from the proteins, we can uh, prepare the nanoparticles from polysaccharides, we can prepare the nanoparticle from synthetic polymers. So, this is clear. So, you can also design it from protein, from polysaccharides and from synthetic polymers. Now, the selection of this material is dependent on so many factors which are involved. How we, will, how we will select a material. So, the size of the nanoparticle is required. <coughs> so, you will have to select the suitable uh, size of the nanoparticles and the inherent property of the drug that either the drug is aqueous solubility and the drug is stable or not. The surface characteristics such as the charge and permeability it is also very important for each and every drug. The degree of bioavailability, so it also must be under uh, concentration, biocompatibility, study and toxicity. So, this is actually these are the factors which are very important for the selection of material. Whenever you are going to formulate, whenever you are going to prepare any nanoparticles, it may be from protein, it may be from polysaccharide or it may be from synthetic polymers. The uh, drug release profile desires and integinicity of the final products, so all these things should be under observations. Uh, you can see uh, on my screen that the nano, how the nanoparticle they are synthesized. So, there are two approaches uh, which are used for the synthesis of nanomaterials and fabrication of the nanostructure. So, the first one is top down approach and the second one is bottom up approach. So, this is clear. So, and uh, I mean that in top, in top down approach, uh, um, what you will do? It is directly referred to slicing or you can say the crushing, the breakdowns or slicing or successio cutting of the bulk material to get a nano size particle. Look at this uh, particle, this is a bulk metals and this bulk metal is uh, converted into powders with the help of what? With the help of nanotechnology, with the help of top down technique. So, what we will do in top down and top top down approach, just just your only uh, uh, we will do uh, the uh, slicing or successive cutting of the bulk material to get the nano size particles. Now, this is bulk metal and this is converted into powder. So, definitely the particle size of powder that is less than the bulk metals. Uh, this is uh, nano particles. These are the nanoparticles and these are the methods through which we can easily prepare the uh, nanoparticle uh, materials. The second one is bottom uh, up approach and bottom up approach or self assembly approach it is also called self assembly approach. So, this is very simple and bottom up approach is look at the uh, atoms, 
uh, which are you know that uh, uh, these are very small so i mean that in bottom up approaches we refer to build up a material from bottom up atom by atom and molecule by molecule so these atoms these are very small atoms but in bottom up approaches these atoms it can be uh, joined together and form a clusters so atom by atom deposition so uh, it will lead to the formation of self assembly of the atoms or molecule so when two or more than two atom they are combined together so it form a molecule and cluster like structure so these clusters uh, come together and form a self uh, assembled monolayer on the surface of the substrate so i think this is clear from the fracture and top down approach and bottom up approach uh, just like uh, um, uh, we are doing in uh, uh, metabolic activity just like anabolism and catabolism that the large particle they are broken down and they are converted into smaller ones and the smaller particle they are joined together and form a cluster like structure so i think this is clear to you people this is the surface react to small molecule and these are the small molecule self uh, assembled you can say uh, mono layers clear okay this is another uh, layout for the approaches for the nanoparticle synthesis so once again this is top down approach in the second one is a bottom up approach so as i have mentioned in top down approaches that uh, 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 that is there are different technologies which are used like uh, sputtering uh, chemicals uh, etching uh, thermal ablation laser ablation mechanical milling ball milling and explosion process so all these processes are used in uh, top down approaches that the uh, i mean that the large particle or the micro molecule so it will be disintegrated and broken down it will be converted into smaller ones uh, while in bottom up approaches so in bottom up approaches there are uh, two technologies they are used so uh, you can see uh, on Uh, my screen so this is what this is top down approach so this is larger particles and it is converted to smaller one while in bottom approach so this is clear and bottom up approach is uh, uh, we can uh, it can be uh, divided into two categories so there are different methods which are used for the bottom up approaches that is chemical precipitation methods uh, electrochemical precipitations and solution gel process molecular atomic condensations uh, spray uh, laser prolysis so all these techniques uh, they are used but it also come under the category of uh, bottom up approaches uh, the second one is bio reduction so and bio reduction uh, this is uh, very simple and clear and bio reductions we are using the whole organism or the tissue or simple the cell um, free extracts for example extracts of plants or microorganism or lg or any mushroom so uh, metals uh, this is a, a clear uh, randomized approach through which we can synthesize the uh, different uh, nanoparticles to reduce the particle size and then they target uh, that particular area for what purpose to reduce the side effect and to achieve the uh, optimum therapeutic effect Uh, now look at uh, another overview and top down technology and bottom up technology so in top down technology look at this is the bulk size so bulk you can say the bulk this is disintegrate into uh, fragments you can see the pieces four different pieces they are formed by top down techniques with the help of crushing with their pop grinding with their pop mechanical forces so the nano structures they are formed this is the structure of nano nano structure and this one is cluster this cluster is formed from the atoms we know that atoms these smallest particles so these atoms they are joined together and form a large cluster molecules so the approach of uh, nanotechnologies you can see i have already uh, shown and uh, different uh, diagrams and top downs and bottom up methods they how the nano uh, particle they are only prepared by these two methods and further there are different technologies they are used like uh, nanonizations and micronization inshallah i will explain each and uh, everything um, in my upcoming lectures uh, this is very simple 
that the methods which are used for the preparation of nano uh, particles uh, this is very easy to understand there are only three methods which are used for the preparation of nano particle so the first one is dispersion of the uh, preform uh, polymers the second one is polymerization of monomers and the third one is ionic ionic gelations or co-acervation method of hydropallic polymers so uh, the other methods such as uh, supercritical fluid technology uh, they are also used for the preparations of nanoparticle and the particle replication and non witting template like uh, uh, print etc so uh, these are also used now uh, how we will uh, disperse dispersion of uh, pre uh, uh, preform polymers the free form which are formed then how we will disperse so uh, it is used to prepare the biodegradable nanoparticles from uh, pla and plg and pca so this technique can be used in various ways like uh, solvent evaporation method this is another method through which we can the uh, polymers which are uh, form uh, the free form polymers so solvent evaporation method is used and another method is spontaneous emulsion um, uh, or solvent diffusion method is used so if you remember so i have already uh, delivered a lecture on solvent uh, evaporation methods uh, now uh, polymerization methods uh, this is uh, also uh, one of the prominent method so in this methods now in polymerization methods what we will do so in this method the smaller molecule the monomer they are polymerized to form the nanoparticles in aqueous solution you must first of all you must will have an aqueous solution then in aqueous solution you will have to uh, you must will have a monomers and then these monomers they are combined with each other and form a polymer and then form a nanoparticle and this technique has been reported uh, for making the uh, polybutyl uh, cyanoacrylate or fully alkyl cyanoacrylate nanoparticles so the uh, as we uh, we have clearly differentiated between the nano capsules and the nanosphere that a nano capsule formation and their particle size it depend upon on the concentration of the surfactants and stabilizer which are used the nano capsule formulations or formation and their particle size depend upon on the concentration of the surfactants and stabilizer i mean that which kind of stabilizer they are used stabilizer and surfactants is important both are important for the particle. okay another method is coacervation or ionic gelation methods so there is uh, much research has been focused on the preparation of nanoparticle using the biodegradable hydrophilic polymers such as chitosan chitosans uh, gelatines and sodium alginate uh, super uh, critical fluid technology and super critical fluid technology uh, it has been investigated as an alternative to prepare the uh, biodegradable micro and nanoparticle because of super critical fluid they are environmentally safe the super critical fluid you know it can be generally defined as the solvent at a temperature above its critical temperature at which the fluid remain in a single phase regardless of pressure supercritical so the carbon dioxide is the most widely used supercritical fluid because of its mild critical condition non toxicity non flammability and low price okay so come toward the application of the nano particulate drug delivery system so these are the clinical application so uh, with the help of nano particle we can also target the uh, tumors uh, you, by using the nano particulate delivery system uh, uh, another uh, uh, advantage of nano uh, particle is uh, reversions of the multi drug resistance in the tumor cells so uh, in case of multi drug resistance you can say it can be also reversed and the nano particles for oral drug delivery of peptides and proteins while uh, we can also the target targeting of the nano particle to epithelial cells in the gastrointestinal tract using the ligands nano particles for gene delivery so it is also very important applications and nano particles for the drug delivery and to the brain so there are different clinic there are different uh, application uh, on the basis of clinical uh, clinical uh, point of views uh, 
Um, so this is very novel area and uh, many uh, students, especially in PhD scholar, they are doing uh, research on uh, this fancy area. So inshallah, in my next lecture, uh, we will uh, talk about the uh, currently marketed pegletic zills, about the description of pegletic zill, which I have already uh, about its nano suspension and about its pharmacological activities and about its overall descriptions which is given in the literatures. So uh, thank you so much uh, for watching my lecture. So once again, uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, credit of this lecture is go to my uh, mentor, supervisor, Professor Dr. Shalzeb Khan, who really motivate me and uh, really uh, give me a proper guideline uh, on this area. So uh, this, is, this was my first lecture on nanoparticles. So after that, inshallah, uh, with the passage of time, uh, we will, inshallah, do a lot of work on it. And uh, if you need any kind of help, so we will do all these things in calibrations. So wish you all the best and thank you once again. Thank you so much for watching my lecture.